I bought this 980 Ti Windforce Edition for 380 off Trade Me in an auction. In this current market, I would say it's a bargain, considering that similarly performing graphics cards such as the RX 580 8GB is about 500 or more on the second hand market. It's a shame I sold my RX 580 at the start of this year in the hopes I could get an RTX 3050 Ti or an RTX 3060, but that never ended up happening due to financial limitations at the time, plus the RTX 3050 Ti still hasn't released at the time of this recording. That's enough about the reasoning and the story which I will address in another video about the 980 Ti. The main issue with this graphics card is that it is so old it has thermal issues. Like serious thermal issues. When I first plugged it in, I used 3D Fire Strike and the Unigine Heaven benchmark to test what type of thermal performance I was getting. The card was on a heavy load and was going up to about 90 degrees Celsius, which in my opinion is extremely hot and shows that the thermal paste is either dry or that the fans are not working correctly or actually could be another issue that I haven't picked up. I checked that the fans were working correctly by spinning them up in MSI Afterburner and they were working perfectly. I searched up guides on how to do it and tried to find specific videos on my 980 Ti, but unfortunately there wasn't too much information. But I did find a few similar videos which showed me which screws to take out and on more general tutorials on what to be careful of when disassembling the card and changing the thermal paste out. Now I needed to find the right tools for the job. Picking a thermal paste was really difficult. In New Zealand there are not many options for thermal paste, but I searched around for a thermal paste that was specifically non-conductive because there can be a chance of spillage of thermal paste onto the graphics mainboard. In such a event, a non-conductive thermal paste would have no impact on the electrical components, for example causing shorts. Personally, I went with the very, very expensive Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. It's expensive at $12 for just a few grams from Computer Lounge, but I've heard really good reviews from it. And as you'll see later, I really, really do love this thermal paste. I usually use Noxua NTH1, but I've decided to go with the Thermal Grizzly one for this graphics card. I also realized that alongside thermal paste, I will most likely also need to change the thermal pads. In any event that the thermal pads are torn, or they get torn while taking them out, or that they are unlikely dry or brittle from use in the graphics card. That's very unlikely though. I searched up how to measure the thermal pads for my graphics card, and a lot of people said that finding an old EK Waterblock manual on how to replace your graphics card's thermal pads with their waterblock will tell you what type of thermal pad you need. I found my specific sizes in the EK Waterblock manual, and I ordered them from Computer Lounge. Very expensive, totaling around $35, which is very pricey for the quantity I got. I also tried to confirm the thickness of the thermal pads by using calipers and looking from the outside of the graphics card. I could actually see one of the thermal pads so I could relatively estimate the thickness to confirm the EK water block recommendation. I couldn't really find any other reliable brands in New Zealand for thermal pads with good thermal conductivity, and the generic ones just won't cut it for me due to their quality. Make sure you do purchase the correct thickness of thermal pads as the graphics card needs to close properly and make proper contact with the VRAM and other components on the graphics card. I also noted that it's super important to get the correct cleaning supplies when cleaning off thermal paste from a graphics card die. I also saw online that a lot of coffee filters are great for this as they don't leave residue easily and they will not grab onto little components by the GPU die minimizing the chances of damaging the GPU die when you're cleaning it. I found some in New Zealand and here is the brand. They're a little bit difficult to find here with not many options. This one was from Pack and Save and was only $2.99 so really cheap. I also needed rubbing alcohol as it cleans off thermal paste really nicely and evaporates relatively quickly. This was about $20 from Bunnings in New Zealand, 
please you do need someone over the age of 18 to purchase this due to the nature of rubbing alcohol also try to make sure that it's 70 percent and above i could not exactly confirm this on the bottle nor could i find the uh, actual percentage on the website for the one I purchased, but it my one did perfectly fine And I do think it's alcohol percentage is probably above 70% just due to the way it performed Some compressed air will also do you good and was actually quite expensive at $20 from computer lounge for one can I also felt this was necessary to make sure I get rid of the dust buildup It's also good to keep in mind that you can actually clean off the dust yourself by using alcohol wipes but it does get a bit messy and can leave residue behind using some cotton swabs helped as well but you do need to be very very careful when you're doing this as you don't want to pick off any components while cleaning and leaving residue behind as due to the nature of cotton swabs so finally I was ready to clean my GPU out. I began by opening the graphics card up carefully but slowly, making sure I get all of the screws out. Next, I needed to pull off the heatsink and the fan from the graphics card. This was quite difficult and it felt like I was gonna break the graphics card, but since the thermal paste and thermal pads were on there for so long, it was keeping a nice seal nice and tight on the graphics card this took quite a bit of force as you can see in the video but it wasn't enough to break it be very careful when you're doing this as you really need to make sure you don't damage the gpu die which is unlikely but it's better safe than sorry i also found that twisting a little bit to the side and then pulling off really helped instead of just trying to rip the heatsink off uh, twisting a bit and to the right or left and just wiggling it off and then pulling it out really really helped me next it's important to be very careful in taking off the fan and led connectors on the graphics cards motherboard unfortunately you will see in the video that there was one two pin header for the white led which refused to come out i tried everything click the pins in bending them slightly backwards to take them out and even gently just taking it out and taking my time but eventually i gave up and yanked it out like an idiot i broke the led cable off from the connector and as you can see luckily from my drone battery of all things i managed to find the same connector and solder it onto the existing one I was very lucky and this is a serious consequence for being impatient. If I just wiggled it out a bit more, I'm sure I would have got the connector to come out somehow. Please be very careful when you're doing this and don't be an idiot like me. Impatience leads you nowhere and as you can see, I did get the connector out eventually um, without the um, cables attached to it. But it definitely did come out, I just had to be a bit more patient with it wiggling out. While I was stressed out about the cable, I had the heatsink completely off and had to make sure to clean it out well. And what I used was a coffee filter and the rubbing alcohol to rub off the thermal paste completely. I also cleaned the fans while I was at it with some baby wipes and some compressed air with the heatsink. Now you can use baby wipes or you can use rubbing alcohol, I personally use baby wipes for wiping up dust, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're actually getting it off and not just making it wet, uh, that will be fine. I could also see that the thermal pads were relatively worn and should be replaced so I decided to replace all of them. This is why I bought some extra in case this happens and uh, well you'll see in the end I just had enough so make sure you do buy a little bit more extra than what you think you need. I cut all of them to size for the VRAM, the chokes and other components. I made sure that these were the correct size but I ran out of thermal pads for the chokes so I had to put an individual pad on which was alright. It just felt a little bit weird. When you're cutting the thermal pads as well, just make sure you get the correct length as well. It just makes your life a lot easier. 
and as well just account for any screw hole cavities that might have been existing. It's usually a good idea to just cut out to whatever shape was on there already. Also note that it's really good to use calipers in this instance because you're not going to be able to tell the exact size of the thermal pads on the graphics cards so you'll be able to lift the old thermal pads off the graphics cards heatsink or wherever it is on the graphics card just peel it off and you'll be able to measure the size on the calipers and then you can put your new ones on from the same size. Next I felt that there was plastic on top of the thermal pads which is normal and I will take them off later when I am ready. For the added extra step for myself I had to test the polarity of the LEDs with the battery that I had so I just uh, noted this down and soldered on a new connector. This was very very stressful right here and I do not recommend being impatient as that's literally what all that led to it. With all of that behind us, I finally cleaned off the thermal paste off the graphics card die. It was very dry and crusty, some nasty stuff right there. It was also overspilled onto the whole GPU die. Which I guess is normal as I saw from other people's videos that it also was spilled on theirs. So I guess, guess this is just a factory thing that they usually do normally. I made sure to make the thermal paste a bit wetter and then take it off with another coffee filter. As you can see, I wetted it and then I took it off and continued this process over and over again. This is because the thermal paste was really dry and I just wanted to make it into a consistency where I can actually clean it off. I continued this on and made sure to get as much off as I could. It was really difficult to get thermal paste off on the sides of the GPU die, but I tried my best using the edge of the coffee filter which definitely had rubbing alcohol on it. I ended up using cotton swabs as well as much as I didn't want to, to get the thermal paste off, and made sure to be very careful about not catching and breaking any components off. As you can see, there's small silver components on the GPU die which can easily be broken off if you snag onto them. Once the thermal paste was finally off and I made sure I could get as much off as possible, the thermal pads that were already stuck on, I made sure to peel the plastic off them to make sure I don't forget later. Next was the thermal paste application. I put the thermal grizzly crowner on the GPU die and in this instance I used a method which was very very wasteful. I spread the paste on the GPU die using the little spudger tool that they gave me, which I usually never do. Then I felt at the last second to put some extra on the die before closing it up, because I felt that the spread wouldn't make good contact with the heatsink. My guess is that it would have probably been fine to have just left it as it was with the thermal paste spread out with the spudger tool I use, but just for peace of mind I just put some extra anyways. There is no doubt overflow around that GPU die and I wouldn't be surprised if I saw some on the GPU mainboard as well. I was personally not too worried about this because it's unlikely that I will need to open up the graphics card again and that the thermal paste is non-conductive thank god so that's pretty good. I also plugged in all the LED and fan headers back into the board. I then carefully placed pressure on the graphics card and the heatsink whilst putting the screws back in. I felt it was nice and tight with a new good seal on the graphics card. I also saw from the outside that the thermal pads seemed to have made good contact which is exceptionally good for my own peace of mind. <laughs> Finally, I plugged in the graphics card back in. I hoped and prayed that the PC would post. I pressed the power button and bam, nothing on the screen. It wouldn't turn on. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just joking. The power supply was switched off. So I switched the power supply back on and the PC turned on and it went to a hundred percent fan speed Ugh. but very luckily lucky it slowed down and I was able to post which was really good I was so relieved that it was working and that I could boot into Windows once again 
I tried numerous games including Valorant, GDA, Control, Assassin's Creed Origin, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey recently, and the 980 Ti was not pushing past 75 degrees Celsius on load, which is absolutely acceptable, and a really, really good result from the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. Plus the new thermal pads, I'm really happy with it. I was really happy and relieved that it was working. The graphics card also didn't pass 75 degrees Celsius on the Unigine Heaven benchmark and 3D Fire Strike, luckily. This is a reduction by nearly 15 degrees Celsius, and that's amazing. Definitely, I would recommend this if you're buying an older graphics card in this current crazy market that you should seriously consider cleaning it and replacing the thermal paste to ensure the card can last an even longer time. This particular graphics card doesn't overclock nicely at all, unfortunately. It could be due to its age, previous owner's abuse, a shunt mod that I probably couldn't see and that went wrong, or maybe, or most likely, a bad GPU die, with just a bad bin. So that's alright, but... So unfortunately, as much as I want to overclock this graphics card, and the whole purpose of cleaning it was to overclock the graphics card and use it for the long run, I have to turn my overclocks off. This graphics card just does not behave well with them. I just have to leave it on the default setting, so that's alright. And another video for another time. I'll show you guys how that went uh, in a new video coming up later. But if you guys have stuck around for this long, thank you guys very much for watching. Check out wisetech.org for some more awesome content, and make sure to have an awesome day guys. I appreciate the support so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!